Hello everybody, this is the second part of our presentation of the analog signature analyzer. Uh, when you start the program, the first thing you see is a um, dialog box asking for a picture file. I already have preloaded this one. And then you have the window, main window of the program. We talked about this one before, but let's uh, redo some of the things that are important. Um, here you have the voltage that you apply to the circuit. The first thing is how much voltage should I use? Well, depending how much the circuit can stand, you should use the maximum possible to get a more distinctive curve for a given circuit. Um, if you have a power analog circuit, you can go all the way up to 10 volts, but for some logic, the maximum is 5 volts, and some, um, the new, more modern logic is 3.3 volts. And in this case, you may want to keep it in 2.5 volts below the, the maximum allowed to the given circuit. Uh, how far you go up depends how brave you are and you're willing to risk damage to the circuit. The best thing if you don't know use 2.5 volts. And what frequency should I use? Well, it depends what you're doing. If you, if you have an open circuit like that, or just a short circuit, it doesn't make much difference. But uh, if you have a capacitor, or an inductor in the circuit, you may have uh, something more close to a circuit, depending on the frequency. Try to use a frequency that is uh, as much significant as possible, what gives you a more distinctive curve. The human eye is very sensitive for the uh, shape of a circle. Uh, small variations in it is uh, easily detected. Uh, try to use a frequency that give you a more distinctive curve than um, this one in here. If you go, it's not, it doesn't mean much if you have just a uh, horizontal circle. For most of the applications, just a thousand hertz will be enough. For, uh, in some cases, you may go down to 75, sometimes to 10,000 to get more distinctive curve, but this is up to you. Once you get uh, a distinctive curve, uh, it's okay. Uh, let's go and edit a uh, circuit board now. This is the picture of a PCB I have preload. You see here some functions like zoom. You can just click on the part. Let's say you want to see some details of the board. The first time you click, you have a, a center. A bit jitter in here, you can see more details of the board. Or just come back and fit. Pan. You can move the board and, and if the picture is too big, it's up to you. Those are just the first three is just for visualization. Well, now that you have the board in here, we wanna start marking the components. All components are a rectangular shape for us. Click in here, point and drag. If you are not satisfied, just click outside. If you are satisfied with the rectangular you have made, just click mark pin 1. This is pin 1. <coughs> as a convention in electronics, you will count the pins counterclockwise as an integrated circuit. This will be pin 1, 2, 3, and 4. Uh, for the sake of uh, learning, let's try to do a few more. And this one. And you can see here, every time you create a component, a uh, part index number is increased automatically. For the board, for the program itself, this is index 1, 2, uh, sorry, this is zero, it starts from zero. Zero, one, two. Uh, you have the name of the file here, and you have three parts on the PCB. 
if you have too many components on the board and you find difficult to locate a part number uh, or index number just click find part find index zero and you see it flashing this is zero this is one and this is two um, anytime you want you can edit the curves for it uh, to edit the curve you can um, go here point click edit or delete add then you have here is just a simulation of the part that's not the real thing but well in this part it will have four pins and let's say that's the the pin one in here and you grab the curve then you move to the next pin again this is just a simulation and you grab the curve then you have another simulate pin in here and you grab the curve and uh, you go to the last pin that is far and grab the curve save and return now you see a green border on it is say sorry <coughs> this is uh, has all the curves and this one doesn't have it let's try to do the second one edit uh, okay you can show in here all the details of the part uh, if you want it's nice to have uh, a nice register of everything it's not required it's an option but you should do it again this has four pins and this is the frequency and the amplitude of testing that you are using and uh, grab the curve then I move to the next one and that doesn't look very nice let's try increase the frequency for this one uh, now you have a more like shape for it uh, grab the curve and let's go for another simulate the pin mm. Um, that doesn't look nice let's return to 1000 Hertz and grab the curve and again let's use the same one to grab the curve you have maximum pins you're done save and return again you have green uh, border on it saying that you have all the curves for this component in here to save your work, done and save. And now let's try to measure it. They look similar, but this one is different. You see, there is no rectangle in here. You can edit the part, uh, the same buttons are available as before. To add the part, you can just select the part. And you have it here. This is, again, it's just a simulation. It tells you that it has four pins on this one, and that looks bad, mark as bad, get the next pin. And uh, that looks bad also, get the next, mark this pin. Oh, that wasn't bad, but get the next one. And this one also looks bad. and you're done with it done and return now you have a red square in here meaning that this component has bad curves on it the list of bad pins by component is here let's try the next one and uh, for sake of argument, let's say that all of them are good. They're not good, it's just a simulation, but you go to the next pin, it change, see the voltage and the frequency, according to which was the required point. Go to the next one, the next one, and the next one. And all have been read. Done and return. And now I have a green square in here 
that the alpines are good. Well, well, they weren't good, but just for the sake of the simulation. And you have the list of parts that are no good in here. To save your work, done in return. Ah, I forgot to mention. When you finish editing, and once you grab all the curve for all components and you want to save your work by pressing the button, you can lock the file as radio only. Lock the file, okay? And now the file is set to be radio only, cannot be changed. This is just for protection for future work. You don't want to damage it by re-editing. Um, all the curves of the work you have done. Uh, if you go to the point you have uh, grabbed your picture file of the circuit you have here is with the same no name at that file. This is all the curves, all the components that you used in here is it stored on that file and that file is set to be read only now. If you go to the other screen as measure from memory, um, you, you have a list of uh, the bad pins in here. Let's go in and do that again. Uh, if I try to edit a part that doesn't have any pin, this doesn't have the curves, so you cannot edit or read the pins. Well, you can edit, but you cannot read the pins. If you go in here, again, you're going to simulate, get the next mark as bad, get the next mark as bad, and the next, and so on. And then you return. You have a red, and you have a list of bad components. Um, once you're done with all the board, you can save the list. A txt file has been saved. And you go in here, PCB pictures, and with the same name, a txt file has been created. And this file has all the part numbers with the bad pins on it. And you can locate the fault component by doing that. Um, well, there is a lot more. You can go and play with the program and see some details. Uh, we're not going to go to all the details of the program in here. It may take forever. Nobody likes very long speech anyway. But uh, thanks for watching. And the next part will be how to adjust the software and the hardware to get it running as you see here. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.